Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. I'm super excited about this week's video. Today I am collaborating with Kira from 50 Shades of Mom. If you guys are not familiar with her channel, I will be sure to leave a link to it down below. She has become an awesome friend over the past year and I love watching her videos. She has tons of great food content on her channel along with home and lifestyle. And if you like watching my videos you will definitely love watching hers so after you're done go ahead and head over to her channel to see what fall meal prep she is whipping up today so for my meal prep today I'm going to prep some fruit I definitely want to get my vegetables and produce washed I'm going to prep some carrots and hummus some caprese salad some Thai salad tuna salad some egg bites, some muffins for the kids, and I'm going to make some soup to have for dinner on this night and freeze the extra for a later meal. So this soup is the pasta e fagioli soup, and this is kind of an Olive Garden copycat, although this one has ground beef in it, and I don't believe the one at Olive Garden has ground beef in it, but either way, it's delicious. I got the recipe from cookingclassy.com. I'll be sure to leave a link to uh, their site and the recipe. In the description box below but basically you just want to start by chopping up all your veggies so I have some celery there then I'm going to go ahead and wash and then I'm going to chop up one yellow onion uh, pretty fine and then the recipe doesn't call for zucchini but I went ahead and added it anyway just because I had one in the refrigerator and I thought that it would make a good addition to the soup now this original recipe is actually just for uh, a stovetop recipe, but I'm actually going to make it in my Instant Pot. So I'll show you kind of how I modify the recipe for that. Um, I've made it both ways, but I think the Instant Pot version turns out better just because it makes the meat um, so much more tender. So uh, what you'll start out with is just add some olive oil to the bottom of your Instant Pot insert. And then I added my chopped zucchini and my chopped onions. And then I'm also going to add some celery. Uh, you wanna make sure, or actually it's probably preference. I like to make sure I dice my celery up really fine just cause I don't like big chunks of it, but definitely uh, you could leave them larger if you wanted to. So to do this, I just use my knife to cut them lengthwise into two or three kind of matchsticks and then chop them crosswise into uh, bite-sized pieces. The only thing I didn't show was um, carrot because I forgot to <laughs> put that in, but I'll do that here in a second. So the recipe also called for garlic. I like using this garlic stir-in paste. I get it at Walmart. Um, so I went ahead and added about three squeezes of that to the pot, and then I'll just add my ground beef. I'm just using one pound of ground beef that I had in the freezer from Costco. Uh, sometimes I get questions on this meat chopper. This is a Pampered Chef one, and I will leave a link to the one that I found on Amazon in uh, the description below if you're interested. I love using that for ground beef and any ground meat, really. I use it anytime I um, make a dish with um, ground meat. So uh, for the carrots, I'm just going to chop up some baby carrots. I usually don't buy whole carrots just because I always think it's kind of a waste of time to peel them when you can buy them already peeled. So once those are chopped up, I'm going to add them to the Instant Pot and then I will just cook that until the meat is cooked through and the vegetables are soft. Next, I'm just going to add my tomatoes and my chicken broth. I'm using some tomato sauce, some petite diced tomatoes, and a quart of chicken bone broth that I got from Walmart. You could use broth or stock, whichever you have on hand. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings. So this calls for dried basil, dried oregano, um, also some dried thyme, and then I'm also going to add some marjoram, I think you could probably leave that out if you didn't have any on hand. Um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and a pinch of sugar and some pepper and then stir that up. So this is the point that you want to cook it in the Instant Pot. I would not add the beans until it's done um, cooking under pressure just because your beans are already cooked. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the um, automatic soup setting and that sets it to 15 minutes at high pressure. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and cook my ditalini pasta. Um, 
you could try and cook this in the soup, but it actually turns out better if you cook it separate just because then the soup doesn't get so gummy and thick. You can see here that I have two cans of beans drained and rinsed. I have one can of red beans and one can of white beans. Uh, so now that the Instant Pot is done, I'm just gonna, going to uh, flip the lever so I can let all the pressure out of it. And then once all the pressure has released, I can take the lid off and make sure that everything looks okay on the inside, give it a stir, and then I will add my pasta and beans to the soup and let it simmer for a little bit to let everything come together. Okay, so the last thing you saw me do there was just add a little bit of chopped fresh parsley. I'm trying to use the remaining herbs off of my deck since it's getting colder outside and I won't have them for much longer. Um, but now the soup is done, so I'm just going to ladle it up into some bowls. Uh, we had this on um, a Sunday night and it was really good. It's been getting colder here and so when that happens in the fall, I always crave soup. But I just served this with some cheesy garlic bread um, and then I also added a little bit of extra Parmesan cheese to the top of the soup. And then, like I said, the rest of it I just let cool and I put it into a gallon freezer bag and stuck that in the freezer. When I'm ready to reheat it, I'll just take it out, thaw it, add a little extra chicken broth, and we will have dinner. So on the weekends, I always like to wash my produce as part of my meal prep. I just find that we are able to use it up a lot better and the kids are more likely to eat their fruit and veggies if they're already ready to go. So uh, this weekend at the grocery store, I bought some apples. I like to buy the bagged apples just because they're a little bit smaller and easier for the kids to eat and they're more economical too. I like to soak them in cold water in my salad spinner along with a little bit of vinegar and then I just give them a good rinse under uh, running cold water and dry them off and put them in the fruit bowl. Um, if you guys have been watching my meal preps for a while, you know that I love my salad spinner. This is an OXO salad spinner and it's available on Amazon. A bunch of you have already messaged me and said that you ordered it and you love it. So I will leave a link to that down below, just like I always do in case you are interested in um, getting one for yourself. Just keep in mind that it's not just for lettuce or greens. You can wash all kinds of produce in it. So I also picked up a bag of pears. Pears are something that I just don't buy all that often and I don't know why because because they're good and my kids like them Adam likes them and so I just need to get better about buying those more often uh, bonus I bought it also had a dollar rebate on this bag of pears at Walmart so they came out to be a really good price so same thing for these I just soak them in the cold vinegar water and give them a really good rinse and then I just dry them off with a clean kitchen towel and put them in the fruit bowl um, I like to store like fruits like apples and bananas and pears and sometimes oranges out on the counter um, just because it's easier access for the kids to grab if they want a snack. I also picked up these blackberries at Costco this weekend and I needed to get those washed. Um, I do get a lot of questions about pre-washing berries and um, I find that if I wash them and put them in the refrigerator, they actually usually stay pretty good about three to four days. Um, sometimes I put them in the Rubbermaid produce keepers and then they'll last even longer. But if we don't eat them by the time they're starting to get mushy, I just throw them in the freezer and then we can use them in smoothies. So I really don't usually have a problem with that. Uh, for strawberries, I'm going to do the same thing, just rinse them or soak them actually in some cold water with some vinegar just to make sure that they are nice and clean. And then after those soak, I will rinse them off, just put them on a paper towel to dry them off a little bit. And then I'm going to slice off the tops and then cut them into bite-sized pieces and put them in a bowl with the raspberries, or I'm sorry, the blackberries. You'll see in a little bit here that I'm actually going to just kind of make a little fruit salad and pack them up in some containers uh, for us to have during the week for snacks and lunches and breakfast.
Okay, so next I'm going to get my grapes washed up. I definitely buy grapes probably every single week. My kids love them, and they're an easy snack to take to work also with maybe some cheese cubes. So I like to take mine off the stems first and put them in the salad spinner and wash them that way. Um, I just think that this gets them the cleanest. So I'm just going to put those in the sink along with some cold water and a splash of vinegar and let those soak and let all of the dirt fall to the bottom. And then once I lift those out of the spinner, I just rinse them off, drain them really well, and I'm putting them in one of these reusable Ziploc bags. I get these from Grove Collaborative. I always leave a link to uh, Grove Collaborative in the description box below, but they definitely have much more than cleaning supplies. They also have um, housewares too. So now I'm going to get finished uh, mixing up my fruit salad. So I'm just putting a can of mandarin oranges in here that I had in the pantry. So there will be blackberries and oranges and strawberries. And to store this, I'm going to go ahead and repurpose some mason jars. I think these, well, this one here was actually a pasta sauce jar. A lot of times I just wash those out and keep them um, to store things in the refrigerator. So I'm going to fill these up and I will put those in the refrigerator. Then I can easily dump them out to put in the kids' lunches or put them on top of yogurt or serve them with dinner. Um, it's just a great way to have fruit ready to go in the fridge and it makes it a lot easier to eat during the work week. Okay, so I had some hummus in the refrigerator that I wanted to make sure it didn't go to waste. And I also had a couple of bell peppers and some baby carrots. And so I'm just going to prep some veggie and hummus packs. I like to do these on the weekends because it's a super quick, healthy snack to take to work. Um, it's much better than grabbing like chips or something from the vending machine. And um, it's like a great high protein um, snack and sometimes the kids even like them too. So this is the Sabra, I think it's the pine nut hummus. So I'm just going to stir that up and make sure it's well combined. And then I'm using these dressing cups from uh, that I get from Amazon. I know that they're not reusable and I realize that, um, but for me, the convenience and the healthiness of this snack outweighs that. Um, it's just so much easier to grab one of these on our way out the door in the morning. So I actually got four cups of hummus out of this. Um, if you're interested in those dressing cups, I'll leave a link to them um, down below. They are pretty inexpensive on Amazon. So to each Ziploc bag, I'm just going to add some carrot sticks as well as some um, red pepper strips. And then I'll also add a cup of that hummus and then we will have these um, during the week ready to go. I actually had this cilantro in the fridge from the previous week and I just didn't get around to using it. But this week I'm actually going to use it in a salad prep that I will show you a little bit later in the video. Um, but the great thing about washing your greens this way is that you can let them soak in cold water in the salad spinner if they've been sitting in your fridge for a little bit and that will just help perk them up and crisp them up a little bit. For cilantro, I just like to soak it in cold water and rinse it off and then I go ahead and spin it dry in the salad spinner. I'm just kind of picking off any bruised leaves there. And then the best way I find to store it is just wrap it in a paper towel and put it in a Ziploc bag and it will stay um, well in your fridge for about a week. Next, I'm going to prepare my lettuce. I always love chopping my own lettuce and thanks to some of you guys' comments, I actually got a lettuce knife on Amazon. So I'll have to let you know how I like that. I just did this meal prep yesterday, so obviously my lettuce hasn't turned brown yet, but I will let you know in the coming weeks whether or not I think that that um, made a difference in the browning of the lettuce. So if you're interested in this particular knife, I'll leave a link to the one that I bought on Amazon down below, but I'm just kind of picking off any of the bruised um, outer pieces of leaves, and then I just like to chop that up. I put it in the bowl of my salad spinner with the strainer, and then I like to squeeze the juice of one lemon down over the greens. Um, I, I'm not sure actually where I 
found this method at. Some people ask what the lemon juice is for. It actually helps crisp up the lettuce after it's been sitting in your fridge for a while. And it also helps to keep the lettuce from going brown in your fridge. So it's kind of a double duty. Um, plus the lemon juice doesn't hurt the taste of the lettuce either. So I just soaked that and rinsed it and then Connor wanted to help me with the salad spinner he always thinks that's super fun so he's just going to spin the lettuce dry and then once that is done I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag with a paper towel um, I know I'm using a lot of Ziploc bags today but honestly there is not a lot of room in my fridge right now because it's super full and so I knew that if I was going to get this meal prep done I had to be creative about how I was storing things so normally I would use like a produce keeper from Rubbermaid, but I, I didn't have room for that this week. So I'm just using a Ziploc bag with a paper towel that works just as well. And then I also wanted to keep some of the leaves whole to use for sandwiches this week. So same thing. Um, I just washed those in lemon water and I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag wrapped up in a paper towel. Okay, so I've been craving tuna salad sandwiches for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but I had some tuna in the pantry from Costco, and so I figured I would just go ahead and meal prep some this week. So I just have three cans of the albacore uh, white tuna from Costco. You can use any kind of tuna that you want. And I don't really have a recipe for this just because it's like I make any type of salad, chicken salad, egg salad. I just kind of keep adding things to it until it tastes right. So to my tuna salad, I'm adding some mayo, some dill pickle relish, some Dijon mustard, um, half the a lemon of juice of, I'm sorry, I can't even talk, uh, the juice of half a lemon, and then I also added some dried dill weed, salt, pepper, and then I'm also going to dice up some celery really fine and add that to the bowl as well. Um, I do like celery in my tuna salad, but it has to be chopped up super fine. I don't like like big chunks of celery or anything like that. So I will go ahead and dice that up as fine as I can and add it to the bowl. And then I also grabbed a few chives off of my deck. These are probably the last ones that I'm going to get out of this season. Uh, if you didn't have these, you could leave them out or even use green onion, but I think it just gives a nice flavor um, to the tuna salad. So uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is before I added all my stuff, I make sure to flake up the tuna really fine. I think that just makes for a more uh, or a moister tuna salad and it just makes it taste better. So I'm just going to go ahead and combine everything super well and then I will taste it. Uh, to me, it seemed like it needed a little bit more mustard, maybe some pepper and a little bit of mayo. So I went ahead and added that and mixed it up really well. And then I will just transfer this to a glass dish and keep it in the refrigerator. This actually made a lot of tuna salad, which I'm kind of concerned about because I'm the only one that really eats it. Sometimes Adam will eat tuna salad sandwiches if I like beg him to, but it's not really his favorite. Um, so I had one of these uh, for lunch today. I'll probably actually take some to work to share with my coworkers, but um, that turned out really good. So the next thing that I'm going to prep is some pumpkin chocolate chip muffins for the kids. This actually makes a pretty big batch and I will leave a link to this recipe down below if you're interested. They turned out really good. So this recipe makes 24 regular sized muffins and to start out you'll just need one can of pumpkin puree, uh, four eggs, and two cups of sugar. I actually used one cup of stevia and one cup of regular sugar just to count or cut down on the calories a little bit. Um, also, you will need a cup and a half of canola oil. You can substitute applesauce for some of that if you want to cut calories as well. So I just whisk this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my dry ingredients. So two cups of the flour and then my pumpkin pie spice, my baking soda and baking powder. Um, sometimes I get questions on my mixing bowls and actually most of them have just been hand-me-downs from my mom and my grandma. Uh, I have some Pyrex bowls which are really like sentimental to me and I love them so much. Um, this one is a yellow Pyrex bowl and it's one of the biggest ones that I have and I just love using it, it reminds me of my grandma. So. I will go ahead and add the remaining one cup of flour and just incorporate that really well, making sure everything is mixed. And then the last step is to add two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I will just do that and then stir the rest up with a wooden spoon. So 
So to bake these, I'm just using regular paper liners. Um, these are Halloween themed, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get those used up. So I just put those in my muffin pan and then went ahead and sprayed them with a little bit of cooking spray. That's probably optional. I just wanted to make sure that they didn't stick to the liners. And then I'm using one of my little cookie scoops to scoop out two spoonfuls of batter into each muffin cup. Um, these don't rise a whole lot, so you can actually fill the muffin cups pretty full and they will still come out fine. So we actually... Uh, had some of these for dessert last night, or the kids did anyway, and then I sent some home with the neighbor kids um, to share with their family, but um, like I said, they turn out really good if you are looking for a fall treat. So since they make 24, I am going to go ahead and fill up my other muffin tin, and then I will get these in the oven. So these will bake at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. I actually set it for 15 minutes, but I had to add an extra five and then they were perfect. So here's a look at them when they came out of the oven. I will go ahead and remove these and put them on a rack so they can cool. These will probably stay fine on the counter for oh, probably about five to six days in an airtight container. If you're not going to eat them all before then, I would probably suggest freezing them. You can freeze them in individual Ziploc bags and then just thaw them out as you need them. They make a great snack for the kids after school or breakfast or as part of their lunchbox. Okay, so now I'm going to try out my new air fryer. I'm making these Asian veggie burgers from... Uh, Aldi that I got they are really good I'm not sure if they still sell them but I hope they do because if you guys see them go ahead and get them they are super awesome so I just got this air fryer it is the house smile brand and I will leave a link to the description box or in the description box below to this particular air fryer on Amazon um, I believe they are trying to get me a discount code so if I have that available for you guys that will be down there as well I went ahead and cooked these at 400 degrees for eight minutes but when I checked on them, they seemed like they could use a little bit more crisping. Um, so I went ahead and put them back in the air fryer for another five minutes. The thing that I like about this one is that it's super easy to use. You just push the unlock button for three seconds. You can adjust the temperature and the time separately, super easy. And then you just push the start button and it's ready to go. We've been using it all weekend for different things for the kids. We cooked some little mini frozen pizzas in there. We cooked some tater tots, um, and I'm excited to cook more things. So if you guys have any uh, air fryer recipes that you'd like to share with me, um, link those in the comments below because I would love to try them. I will definitely be using more um, air fryer recipes in my meal prep videos. So here are the veggie burgers. I'm going to let those cool while I prep my Thai salad. Uh, I've been making a version of this salad for a while and sometimes I make it with chicken, but since I had these veggie burgers in the freezer, I thought I would get those used up. So I like to save my takeout containers, like I wash them and reuse them because I'm a dork like that, but <laughs> I just think it's super convenient to take salads to work like this. So in the bottom of the container, I'm putting some romaine lettuce along with some cilantro and then I just broke two of those veggie burgers in half and I'm tucking them into the back corner. I'm also going to slice up some cucumber and some red pepper. Um, sometimes I get questions on how salad stays prepped in the refrigerator and honestly I don't usually have a problem with it if I make it one or two days before. The thing I would say is just keep all of your elements kind of separated like you see me doing there. That just helps the lettuce not to get soggy, but I usually don't have a problem. Um, I'm adding some um, 
mandarin oranges along with some sliced almonds and then the dressing for this is a sesame ginger dressing i got this at whole foods we don't have a whole foods by where i live but every time i go somewhere where there is a whole foods i stop there and buy dressing because i love it so much okay so here is my completed salad so i've got my salad greens and my almonds fruit veggies and veggie burgers and dressing so i am looking forward to taking that for lunch this week I had some extra pepper that I just went ahead and chopped up. I like to keep this in a baggie in the refrigerator. It's a quick snack for the kids or we can chop it up and throw it on a salad or use it as a snack or even in an omelet. Just it seems like we use it up so much better if it is already sliced up. I also have some extra cucumber, but I'm not going to cut that up because I find it gets too soft when I do that in the fridge. And then for the rest of my pepper jack cheese, I am going to just cube that up and put it in a baggie and I can take it to work for a snack this week. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to prep is some taco meat and then I will keep that in the refrigerator for dinner one night this week. Uh, we have now started swim season and both of my kids are in swim, which means that every weeknight we have two hours worth of practice and so i'm definitely trying to come up with things that i can prep ahead of time to make dinner a little bit easier so sometimes i make my taco meat in the instant pot but today i did not want to get it out and so i'm just going to go ahead and make it in a regular pot so i just chopped up one onion and i'm going to add two pounds of ground beef to the pan along with some salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic powder I will just go ahead and saute this until all the beef is cooked through and the onions are softened. And again, I'm using my handy dandy Pampered Chef meat chopper there. Um, so once this gets all cooked up, I'm going to use some taco seasoning that I got from Costco. This is the first time I've actually used this kind of taco seasoning. It comes in a big um, container and for two pounds of taco meat, you need six tablespoons of seasoning. And then to that, I'm going to add a couple cups of water. And I like to just let this simmer on low heat um, on the stove until the beef gets nice and tender. And then once that is cool, I will go ahead and just put it into a container and put it in the refrigerator. And then this will stay good for um, at least five to seven days in the refrigerator. And we can just heat it up as we need it to make tacos or taco salads. Another thing you can do is if you don't use all of the meat by five to seven days, you can actually put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. It freezes just fine. You can thaw it out and reheat it back up for like taco soup, or you could use it for tacos or quesadillas, or you can even put it in chili. Next, I'm gonna work on some ham and broccoli egg bites for breakfast meal prep. It's been a few weeks since I've made these and I've missed having them just ready to go in the fridge for a convenient breakfast. The recipe that I use, I will link down below. It's actually an Instant Pot recipe. So you can make this in the Instant Pot or I have made them successfully many times in the oven also and that's actually what I'm gonna do today. So to my bowl, I'm just adding some shredded pepper jack cheese eggs half and half some salt and some cottage cheese and then i will use an immersion blender to blend that up until everything is well combined and then in these egg cups i am going to use ham and some leftover broccoli which i'll show you here in a second i wasn't quite sure how many cups that it would make so i started out with eight I got this ham from the deli section at walmart it was actually on sale because it was um the, the use by date was today. And so whatever I don't use, I'll freeze. I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of ham to the bottom of each of my muffin cups. I love these silicone muffin liners. I get them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They're really great for these egg muffins. And then on top of the ham, I'm going to add some leftover cooked broccoli that I had in the refrigerator. So that is a good use for that. So once the ham and the broccoli are in the bottom of the muffin cups, you can just pour your egg mixture over the top, being careful not to uh, make those cups overflow. You can go ahead and fill it to the top because it will puff up a bit, but then it will shrink back down as it cools. 
I realized that I had a little bit more egg enough for another three um, muffin cups. And so I went ahead and filled those up with some more ham and some more broccoli. And then I just kept going until I used all my egg mixture. I like to save a little bit of shredded cheese for the top of the muffins. That's optional, but I just like it. I think it um, is nice to have a little bit extra on the top of those. So once those are all filled up, and I made one batch of these today if you're looking at the recipe, um, I'm going to go ahead and carefully transfer these to the oven. Uh, today I had my oven at 400, I think. Uh, that I was baking for those muffins so I just left it at that and I'm gonna bake these for 15 minutes afterwards I realized that they needed about five more minutes but just cook them until they are set and you'll be good to go like I said I had more ham than I needed and so what I did was just go ahead and chop this up into really small pieces and then I'll put this in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer so I'll have this for a later use. I can either use it to make omelets or more egg bites or I was even thinking that I could use it if I wanted to make like a ham and potato soup. Uh, but anyway, I'll have that in the freezer if I need it for a later use. Okay, so I'm gonna label my bag and I will show you what the uh, egg bites look like once they are done. I went ahead and let them cool until they were cool to the touch. And then you can just peel them out of the muffin cups. And I'm storing them again in a Ziploc bag. Normally I put these in like a glass container, but like I said, the space in my refrigerator was severely lacking this week. So I decided to put them in a Ziploc bag and it worked out just fine. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to prep is some caprese salad. On this night, we were actually going to have this for dinner, but I like to make extra because it will keep for a few days in the refrigerator and we can take it to work for lunches. So I had four tomatoes there that I'm just slicing, and then I have some fresh mozzarella. I got this from Costco and it's already pre-sliced, which is really nice and convenient. So I'm just layering that on a plate along with the sliced tomato. Um, kind of alternating the slices of mozzarella and tomato. Once I get everything arranged, then I will season it with olive oil and salt and pepper. And sadly, I had to buy some basil at the grocery store because my um, pot on the back deck stopped producing. It's really been too cold here in Iowa. So I'm also adding some uh, balsamic vinegar to the top. That's optional. I like the way that it tastes, but you definitely don't have to add that if you don't want to. Another good thing to add to this is pine nuts. If you want to sprinkle those on the top, that's really good. And if you like it spicy, crushed red pepper flake is good too. So that is our caprese salad. We only ate about half of that for dinner. So the rest I split up into containers and Adam and I will be able to take that as a salad during the week for work. Okay, so to recap, here is what I got done today. I washed all my fruit and got it in the bowl. So those are my apples and pears. I got my grapes washed up and put those in a resealable bag. Here's my fruit salad with the oranges and strawberries and blackberries. I have that in a couple different containers. You can see that we actually ate some of that for supper. I have my washed cilantro and my chopped up romaine lettuce for salads this week. And then my lettuce leaves for sandwiches. I also chopped up some pepper jack cheese. I can take that for a snack, some red pepper strips, and then I have my little bags of carrots and red peppers with hummus, four of those total, so we'll take those. And then there's the caprese salad. I put one in a glass dish and another in a plastic dish. And then this was a plate that I meal prepped with some leftover potatoes from dinner and some barbecue chicken from a few nights before, so Adam can take that to work. There is the ground beef for tacos. I also had some leftover salmon from dinner tonight that I flaked up and put in a dish that I can use for a salad later in the week. There is the veggie burger with the Thai salad that I'll be taking for lunch and then the two extra veggie patties as well. There's my tuna salad. So I'll have that for uh, quick dinners and lunches this week along with the egg bites with broccoli and ham and pepper jack cheese. Here are the pumpkin chocolate chip muffins that I made. The kids have already been enjoying those. And then I already froze my uh, soup, my pasta e fagioli soup. So I dated that and then just wrote a note to add broth to it when I reheat it. So that is what I got done today. I'm super excited to have all this done for the work week. It will definitely set us up for success as far as dinner goes. 
So that's it for this week's meal prep. Thanks for watching. If you're coming over from Kira's channel, I hope you stick around because I have lots more meal prep where this came from. See you in my next video. Bye.